when lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed by Walt Whitman. One. When lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed and the great star early drooped in the western sky in the night, I mourned and yet shall mourn with ever-returning spring. Ever-returning spring, trinity sure to me you bring. Lilac blooming perennial, and drooping star in the west, and thought of him I love. Two. O powerful western fallen star, O shades of night, O moody, tearful night. O great star disappeared, O the black murk that hides the star. O cruel hands that hold me powerless, O helpless soul of me. O harsh surrounding cloud that will not free my soul. Three. In the dooryard, fronting an old farmhouse near the whitewashed palings, stands the lilac bush, tall growing, with heart-shaped leaves of rich green, with many a pointed blossom rising delicate, with the perfume strong I love, with every leaf a miracle. And from this bush in the dooryard, with delicate colored blossoms and heart-shaped leaves of rich green, a sprig with its flower I break. Four. In the swamp with secluded recesses, a shy and hidden bird is warbling a song. Solitary the thrush, the hermit withdrawn to himself, avoiding the settlements, sings by himself a song. Song of the bleeding throat, Death's outlet song of life. For well, dear brother, I know, if thou wast not granted to sing, thou wouldst surely die. Five. Over the breast of the spring, the land, amid cities, amid lanes and through old woods, where lately the violets peeped from the ground, spotting the gray debris. Amid the grass in the fields, each side of the lanes, passing the endless grass, passing the yellow speared wheat, every grain from its shroud in the dark brown fields uprisen. Passing the apple tree blows of white and pink in the orchards, carrying a corpse to where it shall rest in the grave, night and day. Journeys a coffin. Six. Coffin that passes through lanes and streets. Through day and night, with a great cloud darkening the land. With the pomp of the in looped flags, with the cities draped in black. With the show of the states themselves, as if crepe veiled women standing with processions long and winding and the flambeaux of the night. With the countless torches lit, with the silent sea of faces and the unbared heads. With the waiting depot, the arriving coffin and the somber faces. With the dirges through the night, with the thousand voices rising strong and solemn with all the mournful voices of the dear just poured around the coffin, the dim-lit churches and the shuddering organs, where amid these you journey. With a tolling, tolling bell's perpetual clang, here, coffin that slowly passes, I give you my sprig of lilac. Seven. Not for you, for one alone, 
Blossoms and branches green to coffins all I bring, for fresh as the morning. Thus I would chant a song for you, O sane and sacred death. All over bouquets of roses, O death, I cover you over with roses and early lilies. But mostly and now, the lilac that blooms the first, copious I break, I break the sprigs from the bushes. With loaded arms I come, pouring for you, for you in all the coffins, all of you, O oh death. Eight. O oh, western orb sailing the heaven, now I know what you must have meant as a month since I walked, as I walked in silence the transparent, shadowy night. As I saw you had something to tell as you bent to me night after night. As you drooped from the sky low down, as if to my side, while the other stars all looked on. As we wandered together the solemn night for something I know not what kept me from sleep. As the night advanced, I saw on the rim of the west how full you were of woe. As I stood on the rising ground in the breeze in the cool, transparent night, as I watched where you passed and was lost in the netherward black of the night, as my soul in its trouble, dissatisfied, sank, as where you sad orb concluded, dropped in the night, and was gone. Nine. Sing on there in the swamp, O oh singer bashful and tender. I hear your notes, I hear your call, I hear, I come presently, I understand you. But a moment I linger, for the lustrous star has detained me. The star of my departing comrade holds and detains me. myself for the dead one there I loved. And how shall I deck my song for the large sweet soul that has gone? And what shall my perfume be for the grave of him I love? Sea winds blown from east to west, blown from the eastern sea, and blown from the western sea, till there on the prairies meeting, these, and with these and the breath of my chant, I'll perfume the grave of him I love. Eleven. Oh, what shall I hang on the chamber walls? And what shall the pictures be that I hang on the walls to adorn the burial house of him I love? Pictures of growing spring and farms and homes. With the fourth month eve at sundown and the gray smoke lucid and bright. With floods of the yellow gold of the gorgeous, indolent, sinking sun, burning, expanding the air. With the fresh sweet herbage underfoot and the pale green leaves of the trees prolific. In the distance of the flowing glaze, the breast of the river with a wind dapple here and there, with ranging hills on the banks, and many lying against the sky and shadows, and the city at hand with dwellings so dense and stacks of chimneys, and all the scenes of life in the workshops, and the workmen homeward returning. Body and soul, this land, my own Manhattan with spires, and the sparkling and hurrying tides, and the ships, the varied and ample land, the south and the north in the light, Ohio's shores and flashing Missouri, and 
enter the far spreading prairies covered with grass and corn. Lo, the most excellent sun, so calm and haughty. The violet and purple morn with just felt blazes. The gentle, soft born, measureless light. The miracle spreading, bathing all. The fulfilled moon. The coming eve delicious. The welcome night and the stars over my city's shining awe, enveloping land and land. Thirteen. Sing on, sing on, you gray brown bird. Sing from the swamps, the recesses. Pour your chant from the bushes. Limitless out of the dusk out of the cedars and pines. Sing on, dearest brother, warble your weedy song, loud human song, with voice of uttermost woe. Oh, liquid and free and tender, oh, wild and loose to my soul, oh, wondrous singer. You only I hear, yet the star holds me, but will soon depart. Yet the lilac, with mastering odor, holds me. Fourteen. Now, while I sat in the day and looked forth, in the close of the day, and its light in the fields of spring, and the farmers preparing their crops, in the large unconscious scenery of my land with its lakes and forests, in the heavenly aerial beauty, after the perturbed winds and the storms, under the arching heavens of the afternoon's swift passing, and the voices of children and women, the many moving sea tides, and I saw the ships how they sailed, and the summer approaching with richness, and the fields all busy with labor, and the infinite separate houses how they all went on, each with its meals and minutiae of daily usages, and the streets how their throbbings throbbed in the city's pent. Lo, then and there, falling upon them all and among them all, enveloping me with the rest, appeared the cloud, appeared the long black trail, and I knew death its thought and the sacred knowledge of death. Then, with the knowledge of death as walking one side of me, and the thought of death close walking the other side of me, and I in the middle as with companions, and as holding the hands of companions, I fled forth to the hiding receiving night that talks not, down to the shores of the water, the path by the swamp and the dimness, to the solemn shadowy cedars and ghostly pines so still, and the singer so shy to the rest received me, the gray-brown bird I know received us comrades three, and he sang the carol of death and a verse for him I love. From deep secluded recesses, from the fragrant cedars and the ghostly pine, so still came the carol of the bird, and the charm of the carol wrapped me, as I held as if by their hands my comrades in the night, and the voice of my spirit tallied the song of the bird. Come lovely and soothing death, undulate around the world, serenely arriving, arriving in the day, in the night, to all, to each. Sooner or later, delicate death. Praise be the fathomless universe. For life and joy, and for objects and knowledge curious, and for love, sweet love, but praise, praise, praise. For the sure and winding arms of cruel and folding death. Dark mother always gliding near with soft feet. Have none chanted for thee a chant of fullest welcome?
Then I chant it for thee. I glorify thee above all. I bring thee a song, that when thou must indeed come, come unfalteringly. Approach strong deliverous. When it is so, when thou hast taken them, I joyously sing the dead. Lost in the loving floating ocean of thee. Loved in the flood of thy bliss, O death. For me, to thee glad serenades. Dances for thee I propose saluting thee. Adornments and feastings for thee. And the sights of the open landscape and the high spread sky are fitting. And life in the fields and the huge and thoughtful night. The night in silence under many a star. The ocean shore and the husky whispering wave whose voice I know. And the soul turning to thee, O vast and well-veiled death. And the body gratefully nestling close to thee. Over the treetops I float thee a song. Over the rising and sinking waves. Over the myriad fields and the prairies wide. Over the dense packed cities all and the teeming wharves and waves. I float this carol with joy. With joy to thee, O death. Fifty. To the tally of my soul. Loud and strong kept up the gray brown bird. With pure, deliberate notes spreading, filling the night. Loud in the pines and cedars dim. Clear in the freshness moist. And the swamp perfume. And I with my comrades there in the night. While my sight was bound and my eyes unclosed. As to long panoramas of visions. And I saw a scant the armies. I saw as in noiseless dreams hundreds of battle flags. Born through the smoke of the battles and pierced with missiles, I saw them, and carried hither and yon through the smoke and torn and bloody. And at last but a few shreds left on the staffs, and all in silence, and the staffs all splintered and broken. I saw battle corpses, myriads of them, and the white skeletons of young men. I saw them. I saw the debris, and debris of all the slain soldiers of the war. But I saw they were not as was thought. They themselves were fully at rest. They suffered not. The living remained and suffered. The mother suffered and the wife and the child and the musing comrade suffered, and the armies that remained suffered. Sixteen. Passing the visions, passing the night, passing, unloosing the hold of my comrade's hands, passing the song of the hermit bird and the tallying song of my soul, Victorious song, death's outlet song, yet varying, ever altering song. As low and wailing, yet clear, the notes rising and falling, flooding the night. Sadly sinking and fainting, as warning and warning, and yet again bursting with joy. Covering the earth and filling the spread of the heaven. As that powerful palm in the night I heard from recesses passing, I leave thee, lilac, with heart-shaped leaves. I leave thee there in the dooryard, blooming, returning with spring. I cease from my song for thee. From my gaze on thee in the west, fronting the west, communing with thee, O comrade lustrous with silver face in the night. 
yet each to keep in all retrievements out of the night. The song, the wondrous chant of the gray-brown bird, and the tallying chant, the echo aroused in my soul, with the lustrous and drooping star, with the countenance full of woe, with the holders holding my hand nearing the call of the bird, Comrades mine and I in the mist, and their memory ever to keep, for the dead I loved so well. For the sweetest, wisest soul of all my days and lands, and this for his dear sake, lilac and star and bird twined with the chant of my soul. There in the fragrant pines, and the cedars dusk and dim, 